Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is National Touch on the Gong. An absolutely exciting piece of EV news pertaining to Australia dropped over the weekend. We're going to see all about that in this video. New South Wales government here in Australia has proposed a new EV strategy. We're going to see all the details of the same. We'll look at loads of the frequently asked questions which have been detailed on the government website. And also, I'll share my thoughts with regards to what this means for us as EV users and how Tesla can benefit from this as well. The new EV strategy plans to accelerate the state's EV fleet and there are a few strategic actions that the government is proposing. Rebates for new electric vehicle purchases, phasing out of the stamp duty for electric vehicle purchases, Fleet incentives for local councils and businesses to buy electric vehicles as opposed to ICE vehicles or internal combustion engine vehicles. Building of a world-class electric vehicle charging infrastructure here in New South Wales. Making it easy to drive an electric vehicle with access to transit lanes as well as regional tourism benefits. Now let's start from the top. Rebates for electric vehicles. Beginning from the 1st of September 2021. New South Wales government will offer 3,000 Australian dollars of rebates for the first 25,000 new battery electric vehicles as well as hydrogen fuel cell vehicles purchased for a price of less than 68,750 Australian dollars, including GST. It is pretty awesome indeed. Point number two is no stamp duty payable on electric vehicle purchases. So from the 1st of September 2021, Purchasers of new and most importantly used electric vehicles and hydrogen cell fuel vehicles purchased under a price of $78,000 including GST will not pay stamp duty and this in combination with the $3,000 if you are eligible for the same will put back about $5,540 Aussie dollars back into an EV purchaser's pocket is what the government promises. Now, point number three is something that I am very interested in. The New South Wales government is proposing a commitment to electrify its passenger vehicle fleet of 12,000 cars by 2030, which will significantly reduce the carbon dioxide emissions here in New South Wales. We have been talking about all of this in the EV podcast Phantom Lane 4 for many a month now. And finally, it looks like the New South Wales government it's taken consideration of all those. Now this, they say, will send a strong signal to manufacturers that New South Wales EV market is open for business. And I think Tesla with its amazing presence already in the state will stand to benefit from this. It would be awesome if Tesla and Elon Musk will work with the local government to set up a much stronger EV presence in terms of manufacturing and deployment of services which will in turn bring more jobs to the local market. I'm quite simply excited about this particular prospect. Now, point number four is a bit of a debatable one. A fair and sustainable road user system, they say from the 1st of July 2027, or when EV uptake makes up for 30% of all new vehicles, then there will be a fair and sustainable road user system charge levied on these vehicles. Now, what this is, there would be a charge of 2.5 cents per kilometer. The government says that the average petrol and diesel vehicle owner pays approximately $613 a year, whereas the EV user will pay an average of $315. Now, this is a debatable one, but given the rest of what the EV strategy entitles, this seems to be okay in my humble opinion, but I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. I also discussed this on Twitter at Tesla Gong, so do check that out and leave your thoughts. Now let's look at the fleet incentives for local councils and businesses. Now this has been committed earlier as well as part of the New South Wales Net Zero Plan 2020-2030, where they will offer incentives to support medium to large size fleets such as local councils, car leasing companies and car share companies to purchase battery or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And this will be through a reverse auction process, ensuring the government maximizes value for money and uptake of EVs. There are more information available of the same in Energy Saver website as well. 
The next commitment of the government is to invest $171 million to build a world-class electric vehicle charging infrastructure over the next four years. They say at every five kilometers interval in Sydney's major commuter corridors, there'll be an EV charger. There will be one charger on average every 100 kilometers in a major highway in New South Wales. And there'll be a charger within five kilometers of residential areas with limited off-street parking as well as in and near commuter car parks, there will be chargers. Now, we do not know what the nature of these chargers are. We're still awaiting some of the details from the government in the near future. This is where I think Tesla, as well as some of the existing players like ChargeFox and EV networks stand to benefit because they, I would believe, would get some sort of support as a co-funding for setting up the infrastructure. Now, with rolling out of the V3 superchargers in Victoria, as well as in Tasmania, this, I feel, will positively impact the adoption of EVs here in New South Wales. Pretty awesome indeed. Now, let's look at some of the FAQs. What EVs are eligible to receive this stamp duty exemption? Well, all new and used battery vehicles, as well as hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, purchased for a price of less than $78,000, including GST, will be eligible of this stamp duty exemption from the 1st of September 2021. Now, this, I think, will definitely help Tesla to establish a massive second-hand car market as well. All those folks who own a Model 3 now who want to upgrade to another Model 3 or maybe a Model Y when it becomes available here in Australia will stand to benefit from this because their EVs will fetch a higher price. Now, as I made mention before, the road user charge will only commence from the 1st of July or when new car sales become 30% of all sales here in New South Wales. So it's a little way off. This is a debatable one, but given all the other incentives, I think it's not too bad. But do leave your thoughts in the comments below, as I mentioned before. Now, they've also gone on to mention why the New South Wales government is introducing this RUC. They say that this will contribute to cost of road maintenance and constructions through a combination of fuel excise charge, stamp duty and registration costs. The other added incentive is the use of T2 and T3 lanes. Let's have a quick look at what this T2 and T3 lanes are. A T2 lane must have a driver and at least one other occupant. That is, a T3 lane must have a driver and at least two other occupants. Now, this will be exempt for an EV user. So, even if you are the sole occupant of your car, you can preferentially use the T2 and T3 lanes. May not be useful for everybody. For people who are in major cities where there is a fair amount of traffic congestion, this may ease a wee bit. Now, which Tesla cars are eligible, do you think? Well, for now, it is only the Model 3 SR Plus and that too only for the stamp duty because the Model 3 SR Plus has a drive away price of $70,108 here in New South Wales. So it may not qualify for the $3,000 rebate because it is a sub $68,000 that qualifies for that rebate. But even so, this is about $3,000 that they end up saving from stamp duty. Here's where I wish Tesla will do something to reduce the price a little further to bring it sub 68,000 so that people are eligible for that rebate as well. Maybe Tesla can introduce a standard range car and then make the standard range plus as a software upgrade after the fact if people want it. Unfortunately, the long range car does not qualify for either of them. Now, do you think the Model Y or the Cybertruck, which will come later this year and next year respectively will also be eligible for the same? Well, leave your thoughts in the comments below. So, do you think these will qualify? Leave your thoughts in the comments below as well, as well as on Twitter at TeslaGong. Alright, now let's look at some of the other car manufacturers which are now present here in Australia who would stand to benefit from the same. The Hyundai Kona Electric starts at about 62,000 Australian dollars. The Nissan Leaf Electric starts at about 50,000 Australian dollars. The MG ZS EV starts at about $41,000 and the Kia e Nero starts at about $41,000. We do not know the price of Mazda MX-30 at this time, but I believe it will also qualify for the same. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you think that this will accelerate the adoption of EVs here in Australia? Do you think this is something that must be emulated by other states as well? We do know that the Victorian government has introduced an EV policy with a road tax, which is being drummed as one of the worst by many in the industry what are your thoughts leave your thoughts in the comments below please click on the like button and subscribe button and do support my channel if you are on the lookout for a tesla of your own 
kindly consider using my referral code details of the same are here as well as in the description of this video both of us will get 1000 miles or 1500 kilometers of free supercharger credits so do not let that go it is money on the table in my case my referral supercharger credits are directly linked to my higher tesla model 3 standard range plus which i hire out via ev.com.au x canberra do consider using my referral code so that i can pass on this benefit another aussie who's looking to buy a tesla of their own if you are looking to hire any EV via EV.com.au, do use my referral code inside the EV website. This is Tesla Gong, which will give you $25 off of your first hire. I'll see you guys in another interesting video very soon. Until then, this is Nash from Tesla and the Gong, signing off. Peace.